Where did the idea of the entourage effect come from? Well, back in the 90s, there was a study done on one of our endogenous cannabinoids, which is 2-AG or 2-arachidonoglycerol. Say that 50 times fast. And what researchers were looking at is that when the endocannabinoid system would create 2-AG, that there were also these other cannabinoid-like compounds that were present, but they didn't actively bind to the receptor. So what they did is they took all these other compounds away and they noticed that the strength of 2-AG on the receptor wasn't as strong. So then they started to slowly add these other cannabinoid-like compounds back into the equation and the strength or the affinity of 2-AG increased. And that's where the idea of the entourage effect came within the cannabis industry, which is basically put, the sum of multiple compounds will have a greater effect than one by itself. Now here's the thing with the entourage effect. There has to be a limit to it. If you were to smoke weed, and let's say that there's you know two or 300 plus different compounds in there all at once, that doesn't mean that every single one Dozens upon dozens, couple hundred different things are going to be affecting you differently and doing their own thing. It's mainly going to be the most dominant compounds that are going to pull the effect in the direction that that compound is meant to do. So what's really exciting about where we're at right now in the world of cannabis is that a lot of research has been done, but a lot more, and I mean a lot more research has to be done. So it's really exciting to be a part and be alive during this time when all this research is happening because eventually they're gonna be able to say that these cannabinoids with these terpenes in this consumption method are going to do this thing that could help with you know different symptoms and different disease states. So it's just exciting to explore the world of science and medicine with this plant.